Good afternoon. This is Steve Ferreira, CEO of Ocean Audit. Pleased to welcome everyone to our Freight Waves Symposium. And today we have a very great guest today. I'm thrilled to announce the introduction of my friend, Elaine Pofeld. Elaine is a independent journalist and speaker who specializes in careers and entrepreneurship. Elaine is the author of the book, The Million Dollar One Person Business, published by Random House. And she looks at how entrepreneurs are scaling to 1 million in revenue before they hire employees. And the good news is Elaine has a new book coming. Elaine, the floor is yours. Welcome to Freight Waves Live. Thank you so much, Steve. It's great to be here. Um, really enjoy getting together by video when we're all sequestered in our home offices. <laughs> well, it's an honor to have you. You know, you and I have had uh, great talks through the years and um, you're an inspiration to me uh, for the audience. Uh, you know, Elaine, I'm in Hartford, uh, Connecticut. Uh, um, Elaine is in New Jersey. Um, Elaine is a graduate of Yale University. And Elaine, I don't mean to make you blush, but you're one of the smartest, smartest people I know. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we've known each other now uh, two, two and a half years. And, you know, I have deep, deep respect for you and, and what you've been able to do to help Americans and, and international citizens with your book, The One Person, uh, The Million Dollar One Person Business. You got that up there? There you go. Uh, listen, this thing is uh, selling like hotcakes on Amazon. So, uh, you know, guys, uh, you know, and um, uh, Elaine just really knows how to tell a story. And actually, it's funny that we're talking about this because um, I purposely, you know, Elaine, I'm going to tell you something. I came up with a really tough topic for you today. Um, okay. You know, per, per, <laughs> the official title is personal branding and how branding can set you up for success post COVID-19. But it could have been something like storytelling, you know, because, you know, one of the things that you're a natural at and I love about you is that you're just such a great storyteller and you have just such a way to connect with the audience and through your words and your, um, your, your dozens of interviews with um, executives and entrepreneurs that have gone from the corporate world and made it successfully in launching in their own launch pad world you've run the gamut from um, babysitter watchers that have become multimillionaires to even old boomer freight auditors like me that have done pretty darn well. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I have to tell you, you know, before we start on uh, personal branding, you know, because I think it's a really big part and parcel of who you are. And this is the niche I think you've, you've hit upon in your books. And um, before we start, Tell us about the new book. Sure. Um, well, it's called Tiny Business, Big Money, and it moves the story forward beyond the million-dollar one-person business. And in that book, which I should mention, Steve will be mentioned in the paperback, his whole story, um, which is coming out in January. We didn't know each other when I wrote the book initially. I, I profiled him for Forbes, and that's how we became friends, and he's spoken at some of the events um, where other entrepreneurs from the book have shared their knowledge. Um, this book looks at how to work with tiny teams. A lot of people want to travel light, but maybe they need to have an admin or they need a few contractors and that human relationship side of things can be really challenging for people who are used to working solo. And so it looks at some of those aspects of, of running a business. It's being published by Norton. Um, it's due to my publisher by September and it should be out by the next September. So it's gonna be keeping me busy. <laughs> But, um, well, we're going to have so, to do some, uh, are we going to do the book tours and Barnes and Nobles and all that stuff or? Uh, yeah. I mean, my book tours are kind of rolling uh, because uh, as Steve knows, I have four children, um, ages 10 to 16. So I can't just get on a plane and disappear for a month the way some <laughs> can. So I kind of spread them out and do them month by month. I'll, I'll make a few steps, but yeah, that's how I do them. And um, I, I really look forward to that. Elaine, I have to tell you, you know, the, the question I wanted to start off with is, you know, how do we define uh, such an esoteric topic like personal branding? But before I do that, I have to tell you, you know, ever since we met, I remember when we started talking back, and I think it was in the summer of 2018, 
And um, a lot of the things that we talked about, I felt I was a little bit one dimensional in, right? And you started to get me thinking about, well, yeah, I do, I do this or I do that. And you actually played a huge role in helping me to become kind of a brand champion and do the things that I do at Ocean Audit that have catapulted me into, for example, being frequent uh, guest contributor on CNBC or in USA Today, or even launching my new um, TV channel on LinkedIn called OK Boomer, which is really kind of a <laughs> yes, I love to try. I love how you're how you're owning that and 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 turning it on its head. It's right. Like, well, you know, listen, I'm a boomer doing business. I mean, I'm a millennial. Oh, sorry, I'm a boomer doing business in a millennial world. But the thing is, ironic about it is that um, I would say 70, 80 percent of my clients are are you know 30 somethings, um, you know, very bright men and women and what's ironic about the okay boomer tv show is that it's uh it, it's totally a play on the irony right because i love my you know my clients and my audiences and you know we co-share when we learn and you know you don't see me you know i'm 59 so you don't see that many 59 year olds going out and saying okay you know it's okay boomer with my moniker the the lapel guy right that's what i want to be called and it's like you know you you kind of helped me and i think it was the forbes article you know when you said okay well this is kind of going to go out to the world and you know this is the thing about personal branding right elaine i think it can it can be kind of scary it can kind of be like you're going off a little bit of a cliff and it can be a real rush when you take that 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 slide down that uh, that river um, without um, a life raft. So I guess the question is, when you look at personal branding um, and its importance, is there an easy way to define it? Well, I think for the one person business, right? If you're a corporate person and you're going to put out a shingle, the personal brand is an extension of you, who you authentically are as a professional. I say as a professional because if say you're um, an Instagram influencer, it might be an extension of you as a person, right? A lifestyle brand. But if we're talking to an audience of say freight auditors, then it's going to be your personality in, in the world of work and what you uniquely bring to the table. And each person is a little different. And so that's kind of what you wanna lean into. You know, I, I love the way you ex explain that because I was talking to a bunch of my business coach and a bunch of other people. And, you know, the, the, the part that they were talking to me about and, and something I think you would agree with is that um, now, look, uh, I probably have been accused by this of some of my peers, but I, you know, I'm at the point now where it doesn't really matter to me. But I think that sometimes personal branding can come off as a bit more shallow or inauthentic, right? So you've got to really wear it, right? I think you kind of talked about that. I think, you know, the idea is how can we, and let's say you're a solo, let's say you're working for a big company and you want to be more efficient on writing a blog on, um, you know, agriculture and become an agriculture expert, right? How can that person um, go into the personal branding but make it more authentic and combat the sense that it's coming off as like shallow or just salesy. What, what can that person do to, to co-opt that side of what they want to do, be a video or, or blog or a landing page. So I'm, I'm curious on, on your take on that. Well, I see, I think you have to be very consistent with what you're passionate about in however you express your personal brand. I don't think you have to have a whole campaign about, you know, this is Steve Ferreira, here's who I am, you know, all over social media to have a personal brand. It could be just a matter of where you choose to um, do public speaking, right? You might have opportunities right. to talk about your craft um, and your profession. You, you might appear on certain podcasts. It's pretty easy if you have an expertise to get placed on podcasts once people can see that you're a good guest. So it's being selective in where you share your expertise um, and staying very focused on your niche so that you become a niche expert. You've been really great at that with CNBC. You're a go-to expert on shipping. You say very narrowly in your niche that you know more about than probably anybody, right? And, and, and they know that, the journalists know that. And so that creates more opportunities to express your brand. Well, well yeah. 
I love the way you're you're consolidating these thoughts because this is what I, what I want to give to the audience because it, it just doesn't happen to me. I mean, you know, it took me 30 years to to learn what you, you know, what you just put into motion, what you said 10 seconds ago. It took a long time for like all the components to click in my head. And so, you know, you and I had a conversation offline the other day and I'm so concerned right now, Elaine, I've got to tell you a little bit of um, background information on the logistics industry. Elaine, it is ugly times ugly to borrow a Mike Douglas firm uh, phrase from money never sleeps out there in logistics, you know, freight waves, the um, sponsor in the um, conference that we're preparing at right now, they put out a almost a daily broadcast on the TV show about, well, how do you sell? Um, how do you overcome selling against a competitor that has lower rates? Right? So I, I think what I'm trying to tell you is that in logistics right now, everyone has low rates. So you have to ask yourself, there's about say 10,000 logistics providers. So you obviously have to sell service, right? But if your rates a thousand, his rates a thousand, your transit times 20 days, his transit times 20 days. You can see where that friend of mine came to me the other day and said, you know, Steve, I'm a real expert, but I feel I'm caught in, in, a, in a groundhog day type effect. You know, I'm not making any traction in my, my life. Now, there's a lot of guys, right, that are not ready to step out and take that solopreneurship or entrepreneurship, but we need to get them ready. How can we help them with their current, in their current role to co-opt their brand? In other words, could we give them a tool where, let's say that um, the logistics guy that I'm thinking of, let's say his focus is on uh, industrial automation um, uh, clients, right? I mean, one of the things that I would do, right, is okay. I want to be. I would become the industrial automation guru. I would put out a newsletter. I would put out a, a cold email blast. I would say what's happening in the industrial automation business, and make him the the point centric expert, right, for for those clients that are in that space, you know. And then the beauty of this, right, is that if he transitions out of the industry. He already has a model for personal branding. Tell me your thoughts on that. Well, if someone's in a very corporate environment, Steve, because I've worked in those environments, you first have to see what's possible in that environment. Right. Because right? I, I think corporate people have a tremendous advantage in building a personal brand because if you're an SVP of something, you've, you've been tested. You know your stuff inside out. You have such a wealth of knowledge um, but you also have to make sure there are no uh, requirements by the company, you know, as far as you're not allowed to speak to the media unless you go through the media, through the press office, that sort of thing. So you want to make sure you're not going to lose your job because of what you're doing. But once you know what the rules are, there's a lot you can do within those rules, usually, like say on your LinkedIn you start sharing articles from very relevant experts in your niche. It's a very simple thing. You probably read your industry trades anyway in the Wall Street Journal and other places. Become a resource, not bombarding people all day long, but maybe you selectively pick one article that's relevant to your target audience. And by audience, I mean um, people that you might want to do business with later or colleagues or people where you can be of service and of value. So for instance, I, with my own LinkedIn, I usually share, I write about small business. So most of the stuff I share has to do with very relevant topics related to small business. Every once in a while, I will share something else, but no one's really listening to me about the other topics. They don't really care what I have to say about those things because I'm not an expert in them. So it, it's very judicious in terms of what, what I share. You know, there's, there's a lot of guys and gals watching this right now that are, you know, what I would call, you know, tweeners, right? They're, they're, they're out there and, and they're people I love in logistics and they're, they're in St. Louis and they're in Tampa and they're in El Paso and they're just, they've got families and, you know, maybe somewhat limited resources. And, you know, we started thinking about this whole concept of the stimulus packages, right, that, that have come out. And um, I started thinking a little bit outside the box, right? Um, let me ask you a question. I, I, this is really off the cuff, but if you were getting a stimulus, stimulus package 
And let's say that you had the, the basics covered, the rent and the food and the childcare and all that stuff. Um, writing about entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs like you do and seeing where they put their money into uh, virtual outsourcing or contracting or support or automation, where would be a good place to say, put in a thousand or two thousand dollars to get their personal branding started in whichever way it might be? Do you follow my question? I do. Yeah. I, I, I would say, first of all, you want to make sure you have robust social media profiles. So if you don't have a lot of time with a lot of social media experts, you can hire someone to build out your LinkedIn, look at other people's LinkedIn's that you think are very well done, right? Because there are a lot of sort of not so good social media experts. And then ask those people, did somebody help you with this? Sometimes maybe a friend can give you a tutorial if you don't have a lot of resources. I think it's good to have a personal website where people can reach you because opportunities come into that. I, I don't think you have to spend a lot of money. Like I have a pretty basic website from Squarespace. It costs me maybe $250. I have my teenagers maintain it. And every once in a while I'll do a refresh. I mean, if you're, if you're gonna use it to conduct business like e-commerce, you need to spend more on it, but just to establish a brand. So that if someone wants to reach Steve Ferreira, they go to steveferreira.com and there's a contact box because Otherwise, people can't find you. Before we conclude, I'd like to just throw it back to you and say if you have any other constructive words of what the audience could do or any other words of assistance. Well, I think in this environment, Steve, we're going to find a lot of accidental entrepreneurs, right? I was just looking at the unemployment figures today and they were 20%, right? I can't remember a time in my lifetime they were ever that high. So we might find ourselves in unexpected circumstances, but what I found in doing the book, I just updated the whole book and was back in touch with almost everyone in it. And I found a lot of them had actually started the business in the last recession or right afterward, seemingly the worst possible time to start a business, but actually it turned out not to be in retrospect. So it's not a bad idea to start sharpening those entrepreneurial skills now. Absolutely. I think every it's, it's just a good tool to have in your bag of tricks, even if you never use it. So if you start putting yourself out there, what tends to happen, like Steve, you spoke at the event we did at the New York Public Business and Industry Library, right? Didn't six people approach you with other speaking events that they wanted you to speak at right after? I mean, that it brings it's opportunities to you yeah. without you having to go hunt them down, which is hard to do when you have a corporate job. You're so busy keeping your job right now. But if you, you know, selectively, maybe once or twice a month, try to do one of these things, maybe you do one substantial LinkedIn post a month and try to get involved with some type of speaking event, you'll be surprised at how momentum builds and, and opportunities come to you. Or maybe you just find out about leads at other companies. And if you need to get another job, maybe you decide, I don't want to be an entrepreneur. I'm not entrepreneurial. I would like to work for a company. You'll just have more connections and people who've seen you in public and how you present. And that'll work in your favor. I, I think it's really easy to get scared right now. But there's actually a huge amount of opportunity for everybody in an environment like this to, if you know your niche, you can be so helpful to other people who don't understand what you know. You can also um, do pro bono work. It, it's funny because I just enlisted an attorney, I, I'm sorry, a CPA to help me. I've been getting, I've been writing a lot of stories about the Paycheck Protection, Protection Program and the EIDL grants, which a, a lot of you are familiar with, the part of the SBA um, relief package for small businesses. And I was getting so many technical questions that I spent a whole morning last week on the phone with people who read my articles. And then all of a sudden it dawned on me, hey, wait a minute, I never studied accounting. I'm reading parts of these SBA guidances to people, but I really, would rather refer this to an accountant. So I posted on LinkedIn that I needed an accountant who was willing to do pro bono work. Somebody responded, and now I'm feeding this accountant the questions. Now, these are all a possible pipeline for him of new business. Some of them more than others, it's gonna depend on you know whether they fit his expertise. But I thought a lot of people could be doing this. It's just, 
offering some pro bono services and, and bringing people into your network with no expectation of them doing anything in return. And you'll be surprised at the good karma that it brings. Elaine, you know, you, you just said it all. I mean, that was a perfect wrap up to our, uh, our time together. I think that um, when you offer that pro bono or you're offering, um, you know, somebody to call you, you know, when we were in that uh, public library um, webinar, <clears throat> I found out that there was a media, a couple media people that had actually come to that event. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, just, just to talk to me afterwards, right? And, wow. and so, yeah, I never told you this, but after that happened, then they ran another story about it. So I got, you know, I got more um, positive exposure. Fantastic. And, I didn't know that. Oh, That's it was, it, it was like, he, he I, I mean, you know, I'm kind of an emotional guy. So, I mean, you know, I kind of almost cried because, you know, when he, told, when he told me he came to see me, it's like, oh my God, you know, it's like, uh, um, I almost said like, do you want me to sign something? Like, you know, I was like, yeah. no, it's like, I didn't know, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. Cause like, he was so great. I love this guy very much. I'm just kidding. But um, my, my point is that, uh, um, listen, you know, uh, I'm a big believer that whether, you, you know, it doesn't have to be USA Today or Bloomberg or CNBC. I mean, if you do something in Dayton, Ohio, and, and you help, um, I don't know, you help organize the supply chain for the, uh, the, 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 the agricultural harvest, harvest and you help a company, um, you know, recreate their um, load plans so that instead of shipping 100 containers, they only have to ship 75 because you found a better way to economize the product. And, and you could do that, for, you know, free of charge. What I love about that is that when that guy calls the real paying customer, you're in. Oh, Sheila did this for me. She saved us, you know, eighty-five thousand dollars, and she did it as a um, as an expert, just out of the courtesy of helping me as a as a as a professional. I mean, if you hear that kind of stuff, and you're a CFO or a thought leader, you're going to get the call. The Sheila, the person that did that, or Mark, he's going to get the call. So. I think we've given the audience a really great um, bridge of information. And certainly there's so much more out there to come um, from the OK Boomer TV channel on LinkedIn and you know Elaine's um, blogs and her books. Um, Elaine, uh, just a quick shout out. How can the audience uh, follow your work? Oh, well, thanks, Steve. It, on, on LinkedIn, they can find me under my full name or Twitter or Facebook. I'm most active lately on LinkedIn. So feel free to send me an invite. I'll definitely get back to you. And I'm happy to talk writing, shipping, whatever it is you'd like to chat about. I'm happy. That's to hear great. From That's you. great. And just so everyone knows, it's uh, um, P-O-F-E-L-D-T. <laughs> Yeah, that's one of the, it's one of those long German names that's really hard to spell, but I'm sure it'll be in the show notes somewhere. <laughs> well, Elaine. Also, you can see it. It's on, here it is. By the way, that's such a great cover. Can you, can you center <laughs> it a little bit more? Here. I love that. Yeah. I wish I designed it myself, but I didn't. They have these wonderful artists at Random House where it's somehow miraculously your book gets a cover and, um, I'm really happy about it. The, the paperback will have a different cover, so it'd be. Hey, I, I you can read about Steve's whole story. In oh, the, yeah, thank you. That's uh, that's a uh, very generous. Uh, but uh, was uh, Random House the, the same organization that Jackie O worked for? You know, that's a good question. I think. Or was so. that Double Day? No, I, I I think it might. Well, I don't want to say. I'm not certain. Yeah, yeah. But I know she she definitely was very active in publishing. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, a lot of great Americans that have been in the avenue of uh, media and journalists. And Elaine Pofel is one of the best in the business, and I consider her a close friend. So let us sign off today. It's been an honor to talk to you all on Freight Waves tonight, Elaine. I've really enjoyed our time together. We I must do this again. Thank you so much, Steve. Okay, and good night, uh, good day to everyone, whatever time zone you're in as you watch this. And uh, we'll be putting out more content uh, soon. And um, stay safe, um, keep the families healthy, and we'll get through this together. And it does take a village, and uh, Elaine and I are kind of building one. So come join us. So see you guys later. <laughs>